and welcome back to the Turd Fork Show. All right, today's video is a ladder question that we've been requested. And it's not just a ladder, but it's a ladder where somebody's asked, what about if the wall actually wasn't smooth? Typically, most problems you work, the wall is smooth and frictionless. First off, forget about this wall, and let's just do a normal basic ladder. Normal ladder, you're always going to have, going up from the floor, a normal force. Uh, every ladder you're going to have, usually you're going to have at least a weight of the ladder going down. So let's say we've got a 500 Newton ladder going down. And then every ladder problem typically always has where it's leaning against the wall, it has this reaction force leaning at the top. One thing I need you to get straight right off the top of, of this video is that this normal force is a reaction force. N and R are a lot in common with each other. N is the reaction force of the floor versus the ladder. R is the reaction force of the wall leaning against the ladder, and you need to get that. Now, most problems will give you a friction at the bottom that we draw this way, and I've done quite a few videos that are like that, and we'll call that friction mu N. So there's our friction here. And now, this problem, what's going to set it apart is right up here at the very top. At the very top, this problem is going to have a friction, a mu. So this, and to make it easier, we'll say it's the same mu as the floor. So we've got this mu. So we've got a friction. Which direction is the frictional force going to go? Well, you got to remember, the ladder is trying to slip down the wall which means that the friction force must be going back up the wall. Now, as we take a look at this, I need you to establish something. What's the equation for this friction of the wall? Well, the friction of the floor was mu n because of this reaction force, which means the friction of the wall up here is actually mu r. And hopefully you understand that because this R is at 90 degrees to the wall. It is my reaction force up here. So instead of mu N, I'll just write mu R. Let's go ahead and do something. Let's go ahead and throw in an angle. Let's make this 60 degrees, which would make the N 30, which would make the 500 also 30, which would make this angle 60. Now, somebody probably needs a little help up here figuring out some anglage and I've already extended this little dashed line from my beam to help me out up here at the top but this R and mu R are at 90 degrees to each other so what is this angle that remains well this is 180 degrees so that means this would be a 30 degree angle and remember I need all these angles compared relative to the beam I need all these angles relative to the beam because remember, whenever you do one of these problems, all I'm really after is the perpendicular component to each of these forces. So no matter what I'm doing, it's these perpendicular components that I'm looking at in these problems. All right. Now, here's our basic problem. Now, what I need to do first is what a lot of people forget to do. Everybody gets so gung-ho, they want to do torques, torques, torques. Every problem should start with the sum of the forces first. So let's go ahead and do something. Sum of the forces X equals the only thing going to the right in this problem, mu N. The only thing to the left is R, so mu N minus R equals 0. Now if we also look, uh, going up, we've got an N. So sum of the forces Y equals N. But now this is where it's different. Yeah, we've got a minus 500, but we've also got this mu r that's going up as well. So we've got two vertical positive forces in this problem. Minus 500 equals zero. All right, so far now, that's got our sum of the forces x and sum of the forces y. Now we need to do a sum of the torques. For me, I'm going to go in, I'm going to make my pivot point the bottom. And that gets rid of the N and the mu N from my torque equation. So let's see if we can't write a torque equation. You're probably going to say, uh, Turd Ferg, you have not given us a link for this ladder. Yeah, I know I haven't. That's cool. I'm just going to say that this ladder is 1. 
So one meter long, you know, it really doesn't matter in these. One meter long, because the most important thing in what I'm doing is, if I'm going to say that this R is 1, then I've got to make sure to know that that R is 0.5, and that's the most important thing. Uh, and so even if this ladder was 10 meters long, as long as I use 5, the proportions are all that matters here, not so much the numbers. So anyway, now let's go down and do a sum of the torques based on the bottom. Well, the only clockwise torque in this picture, in other words, the only torque going this way, the only torque going that way is this 500. So we got to remember 500 sine of 30. Oh, I don't want to use green. Let's go back to black. 500 sine of 30 times its R, which is a half. Now, that addresses the torque of the 500. Now, we've got a torque due to each of these at the top. So I've got a torque due to the R. So I'm going, now I'm going to make sure not minus because it's counterclockwise. R sine of 60 times 1. And so there is my FR for that torque minus the other force at the top, which is a mu R at 30 degrees. So minus mu r sine of 30 r of 1. And guess what? Those famous words can now appear. The physics is over in this problem. So we can actually go ahead and work this problem out at this point. What makes this problem kind of crappy is the math. But the cool thing is we've got three unknowns and three equations. So we should be okay in this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do something. I'm going to go ahead and simplify this torque equation. Uh, sine of 30 is a half, and that's a half. So 500 times a half is 250 times another half. So that's 125. Sine of 60 is 0.866 times 1 is 0.866. So this is minus 0.866 R. And over here, we've got minus mu r sine of 30. And again, sine of 30 is a half. So this would be minus 1 half mu r equals 0. So I've simplified that. Uh, let's go up here. We've got to combine all three of these equations together. And I'm going to try, when all this is over, and find mu is my goal in this. Let's go ahead and do something. Let's take this first equation up here. Mu n minus r and let's go ahead and do something let's solve it for n and then we'll substitute it back into this next equation so let's see that would be n would be equal to r over mu so all i've done is took the first equation solved it for n and now what i want to do is actually take that and i want to plug it back into my sum of the forces y so I'm going to rewrite that sum of the forces y with this substitution made. So let's see, that in place of the n, that would be r over mu. So r over mu plus mu r minus 500 equals 0. Let's go ahead and do something. Let's move the 500 to the other side. So let's say that's equal to 500. Now, if you can tell what we've got at this point, We've got it now down to two equations. So my goal now is this. I want to solve this equation, this combined equation. I want to solve it for R and then substitute it back into this other equation that we've got written up here. So let's see if we can't do that real quick. So solve this equation for R. Factor the R out. The algebra in this problem is what makes it kind of ugly. So that would be R times 1 over mu plus mu equals 500, which essentially means that R is equal to 500 divided by 1 over mu plus mu. So now all I'm going to do is take that R and I'm going to plug it back into this torque equation that we've already simplified. So let's take the R and substitute it back into up here. And again, the worst part of this problem is this algebra. So let's see what we can do. That would be 125 minus 
times R, and R is 500 over, and then right now my math is probably looking a little ugly, but I'm trying to make it as streamlined as I can for you. And then let's go look. Minus 0.5 mu R, so minus 0.5 mu times r which once again r is 500 over 1 over mu plus mu and ladies and gentlemen we are in the home stretch we've almost got this problem solved for mu uh, let's go ahead and do something 0. 0.866 times 500 let's go ahead and do a little simplifying here times 500 I think it's 433 so this would be 125 minus 433 over 1 over mu plus mu minus, uh, this next one's going to be easy. I don't need a calculator. 0. 0.5 mu times 500 would be times 250 mu over 1 over mu plus mu. Uh, and all that's equal to zero. Now I'm going to go ahead and do something. This is kind of ugly with this 1 over mu written out across here. All right, had to take a pause for a second. Uh, let's do something here. I want to go ahead and do something. I want to get rid of this 1 over mu plus mu from across the bottom. So I'm going to multiply this entire thing by 1 over mu plus mu, which is going to give me 125 times 1 over mu plus mu and then what's going to happen is this. That's going to get rid of this 1 over mu plus mu. So that would be minus 433 minus 250 mu equals 0. And now we can come back. And again, the worst part of this question is this algebra on the end. Let's distribute the 125. So that would be 125 mu. Oh, I messed that up. be 125 over mu plus 125 mu minus 433 minus 250 mu equals zero and now oh check this we've got uh, like terms here so 125 mu minus 250 mu so we've got 125 over mu uh, minus 433 minus 125 mu equals zero. And now I've got the same problem. I've got this mu stuck down here I don't like. No problem. Multiply the entire equation by mu and that'll get rid of that mu. So we're going to multiply everything by mu and get rid of it. So that becomes 125 minus 433 mu minus 125 mu square equals zero. And lo and behold, A, B, C, we've got a quadratic equation. Go to our calculator, mode 5, 3. Uh, we've got negative 125, negative 433, and C is 125. Uh, bam, 0.27. And that is the answer to this question. Again, the physics is not bad. What made it problem bad was all this algebra getting down to there. So anyway, I hope you got something out of this. This video ended up kind of long, but that algebra takes a while. Anyway, uh, peace out, deuces, and thank you for being on the Turdford Show. Bye.